Today, I'm going to show you how to install an outlet. Before we begin, I should mention that dealing with electricity can be dangerous and can kill you. As such, do it at your own risk. And if you at any point feel uncomfortable with the task, I do recommend you hire an electrician. Aside from that, there's a few ways we can go about it. We can daisy chain off uh, an existing outlet. We can daisy chain off of a junction box, or we could run brand new cable all the way down to the circuit breaker panel and just put a new breaker. There's all kinds of ways to do it, but today I'm gonna to show you how to wire it to an existing junction box. It's starting to get rather hot around these parts, so I would like to put a window air conditioning unit in here. I'm gonna put it on this wall. We will need an old work box. Old work meaning, unlike with a new work, you would actually nail it to a stud because there's no drywall. But because there's drywall and we don't want to destroy this just to put this in, it has these flags. So we cut out a hole and as we screw this in, the flags grab a hold of the drywall. We'll of course need a new outlet. This is a 15 amp outlet. Of course, a handsome cover for it. I am going to be using 12 gauge three conductor cabling for this, which means it can carry technically up to 20 amps. But 15 amps, 14 gauge is fine, as long as you size the appropriate breaker. 15 amp breaker equals 14 gauge cabling, and 20 amp breaker equals 12 gauge cabling. Although there are some situations where even a 15 amp breaker justifies a 12 gauge cable if your run is long enough. My idea is quite simple where I have this junction box in this light, that's what I'm gonna use to daisy chain off of and bring a cable upstairs. Now you might be asking, hey, this is old style cabling and it only has two conductors in it. However, this is armored BX cable. It has a grounding strip inside of it. As long as we have that grounding wire inside, you can actually see them right here. That's what they used to use for grounding purposes. We can use these to create a safe ground back to the panel. Otherwise we're talking, oh yeah, we should probably also get some fire block. If we are to drill a hole, code says we need to fill that hole with fire block. I'm gonna use this multi-tool with a saw attachment to cut into the drywall. You will of course need a multimeter, this one from Klein, wire strippers, screwdriver with flathead, Phillips head, leveler, a circuit checker for when we're done. We need this cable clamp and appropriately sized wing wire connectors depending on what we find down there. Pencil, measuring tape, and stud finder. Let's get started. First, let's see if we can't find a stud because it would be foolish to cut a hole out and find that we cut into the middle of a stud. Huh? It leaves a little indent. If it is indeed true that there's a stud there, then my other stud finder, which is basically just really strong magnets, should be able to find the drywall screw. Let's guess that a stud runs through here. Next up, in keeping with the general aesthetic of the house, I will measure exactly how far from the uh, kick panels, or whatever you want to call them, they wound up mounting the outlet. Eight inches. We'll go with that. Eight inches up from this trim panel. Here, at the bottom of our outlet. You will, of course, now use this leveler to make sure we're putting a nice, clean line. All right. We'll use this to outline. A perfect little outline. Now, I will use my multi-tool with a saw attach attachment. You can, by the way, use a box cutter or a drywall cutter. It doesn't really matter. I just like this because it helps me keep my lines clean. But as I cut through here, I'm noticing it goes all the way through. So I think I'm pretty much safe on the stud problem. If you do wind up hitting a stud, cleaning this up is a hell of a lot easier than trying to clean up a hole and try cutting somewhere else. Try this open without losing it inside the wall. A perfect cut. I was right about that stud. Let's test fit this thing. Not quite, so I'm just going to expand the hole up here. And to a problem with this one being a bit too deep, it hits the back wall there. So I got a similar one, it's just a bit more shallow. And now we have a perfect fit. Now comes the most fun part, 
we have to drill a perfect hole that's perfectly aligned with where this drywall cutout is so we can fish our cable through. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure relative to this wall, which is an outside wall, and hope that I can get a similar measurement in the basement. But the preferred method, if you have the tool, it's a flexible bit for your drill, and it can go down, down in, it, and it can come at an angle, and at the end you'll put like a three-quarter inch bit. That's how to make this job a little bit easier. But I don't have that, so we'll do it the hard way. We are 19 inches from the wall or thereabouts. For the other reference, it's good to have something to refer to in the basement that you can actually see. Here I've got a copper pipe that leads to this radiator, and I'm gonna measure from this pipe to the wall. And we are at around 10 feet. 10 feet should bring us right inside this cavity. Here we are in the basement. There's the pipe. Let's measure 10 feet away from that, and about 19 inches from, well, hopefully this concrete wall, but I could be wrong. 10 feet puts us right around here. We got this marking right here, right before this joist, that's about 10 feet. And I just put this mark right here, that's about 19 inches from this concrete wall. All right, cordless drill, three quarter inch wood boring bit. There's our mark. And about one inch away from that is where I'm hoping we need to go. If we hit it, so we're gonna try to use a bit of a trick. So here's a trick we're going to use. I've got this handy little hanging light from Harbor Freight. Turn it on. I'm going to hang it right here and let it shine right down this hole. And if, if it's there, we'll see it. Oh, I see the light. All right, got my 12-gauge wire here. All right, I've got a spore here. You know, ideally for this pr process, you have a friend upstairs to help you fish it through. But we're forever alone, aren't we? Yes, we are, but look at that good luck. I never get this shit in through the first try. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's wire it. Obviously, nothing's connected on the other side, so this is safe to work on. I'm gonna put this through here. Just gonna fish it right back through. Let's strip this jacket back here a bit. That would help if I had... I really need to pull on this thing. And with you, I need to strip this jacket about six inches. But this here for me is just a bit over six inches. Finger guns. Official measurement tool of electricians everywhere. I'm gonna bend them into little hooks. Clockwise hooks. We take our outlet. We see it has brass screws and silver screws. The brass is where the black goes. That's hot. Like that. We hooked it up clockwise because now as we're tightening the screw, we're not going to wind up unraveling. Good. Same thing, other side. Don't forget about our, our good friend, the ground. Same deal. That goes on this green ground screw right here. Put it back in. Let's slide this thing in. Now, as we tighten the flag screws here, the flags are gonna come in and press against the drywall. There's the outlet. Let's wire it up from the basement. Before we start our basement party, wiring it up and using the multimeter, it is a very valuable lesson I learned from OSHA's high voltage training. I'm gonna pass this wisdom on to you. You never know if your uh, multimeter is potentially broken. So before you start using it, before you start relying on, say, on it to say, oh, there's no voltage here, test it on a known outlet first. 
just to make sure it works. So we're going to set it to voltage, we're going to set it to AC, we're going to poke a known outlet. All right, 120 volts, 121. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this isn't working condition. Now we know we can trust it. Yeah, totally glossed over this, but we'll need them, these staples to nail down the cable. Parting with some electricity. I want this to go all the way here into this junction box. First, we need to shut off the circuit breaker. Conveniently, the panel is right here and I can see it. I can see the light over there. So if I hit the right switch, the light will turn off. Bing! Now we get to work in the dark. Not an ideal situation. Because we are beautiful and smart, we won't rely on just the absence of light to let us know that this is safe to work on. We will use our multimeter so that we can stay beautiful and smart for years to come. Set it on AC volts, poke it in. All right, I think we're good. For starters, I'm gonna remove the light fixture. I see here something has burned. Very concerning. I didn't want to feed it through this, but I'll have to. I'll feed it through this one. Right. It's tight. Now to make it really tight, we take a flathead screwdriver, hammer, and we hammer on the ridges of this nut. All right. Now, cable in. The extra is always good. Remember our good friends, the cable clamps? Their time has come. Not exactly a stickler for aesthetic, but this is what it wound up looking like. I believe the rule for staples, you must have a staple within at least 12 inches of your junction box. Thereafter, there needs to be the cable needs to be supported every 54 inches wherever you're running it, whether it's along studs or joists. And last but not least, these are gauged, so make sure you select the appropriate gauge staple for the appropriate gauged cable. And finally, note that these are insulated, so you can't just use uninsulated staples. You will risk breaking through this jacket, and then you'll have a really bad day. And there's of course no twists in this. That's good. Now. I will clamp down here on this cable clamp. Probably should have set some bone first. Ground wire nuts. Ground wire nuts. They are special because they're green and they have a hole through them, which is necessary. I have stripped everything here. I've got six inches or so. Ground wire I, stri I cut a little bit longer because we will need that extra length pretty soon. Undo this wire nut here for the hot. That in black to black, of course. I'm gonna use this big chunky blue wire nut. Same thing on the neutral side. All right, that's good. Now for the ground wire. For the ground wire, they hooked up to this screw here. Normally, on houses that are a little bit more modern, the ground screw will be green. We're gonna take this ground wire here that belongs to the lamp and outlet combo. And this is where this wire nut comes in. Twist it, the smaller one, around larger gauge ground wire that we put in. We slide it in, we twist, twist it around. Ground connection, it also is NEC compliant. Always a good thing. Let's make a little loop. Oh man, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but uh, got it. Oh, interesting. I noticed that some of the neutral was a little bit charred. Now I see that the neutral screw on this outlet here was never tightened. So it was a shit connection. That is dangerous, but we fixed it. Okay, let's stuff this all away. 
I'm now buttoning it up. I'm trying to make sure that the ground wire here does not hit either the neutral nor the hot screw on the outlet. So, if we did a good job and didn't fuck anything up, once I throw this breaker, it should not pop back off. If it does, I did something wrong. So far, so good. Lights are back on. This light works as expected. Excellent. We got no sparks flying out of here. Always a good sign. We're gonna test the reading here. Let's probe it. Both outlets. Excellent. Now, I also have this tool right here. This will tell you if you wire anything back backwards, if you have an open ground, open neutral. I like to finish off with this. We got two yellow lights. Which means we wired everything correctly. That is good. Cover back on. If for some reason you didn't do a very good job with the drywall, they do make bigger ones and I believe they call them princess outlet covers. All right, looks pretty damn good. Make sure, of course, that this is a tamper resistant outlet. Where we drilled the hole, we we're supposed to put some fire block here shown without a nozzle. Unfortunately. Oh boy, using my bare hands for this shit. I'm sure it's an irritant, etc. etc. Disgusting. Okay, good enough, I assume. Brake clean got it off reasonably well. Nice. Let me use my now conveniently placed window out. Yeah, and that's how you install an outlet, at least one of the many ways you can install an outlet. I will put a link in the description for most of the tools I use, and always a good idea to, if you decide to DIY this, to invite an electrical inspector to inspect your work. Make sure you didn't mess anything up, and to make sure that you're following not just the latest and greatest NEC code, but also any town bylaws you may have, which can sometimes be different. And that's all I have for you today. I hope this has been educational. Be sure to punch that like button and electrocute that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time.